Breaking news. Sony announces that they are the number one camera manufacturer. But are they really? Because this source seems to think that Canon is in a distant first place, leaving Sony way behind. Believe it or not, this is an extremely important factor in the camera that you choose because it could decide which manufacturer is going to be around to provide you future cameras and lenses. I've gathered many different sources to get to the actual real answer, but first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes beautiful websites incredibly easy for you. Get your own custom domain, your own private corner of the web that shows off your work in the best light possible. That is not your Instagram or your TikTok or your social media. Those are all clouded with ads from your competitors. This is your design, a beautiful, simple, easy to maintain website at squarespace.com slash Tony. They'll give you a free trial, no worries. If you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Thank you to all the sources that I used. Petapixel, CIPA, BCN, iMark, Nikkei, and DP Review. Among others, check the description for a full list of sources. First up, who cares? Literally, who cares which camera is number one? Shouldn't you just be happy with what you have? First of all, you're probably rooting for your team. Once you make a buying choice, you want that team to win. It is a lot like sports, at least emotionally, partially because the winner is going to be validating your choice. If you pick a Canon and it seems like the rest of the world pick Canon, you're like, oh, okay. Democracy works. These people are all smart. Therefore, I am smart. But if you picked a Pentax and now it seems like nobody's buying a Pentax, you might be wondering like, what do all those people know that I don't know? There's also the economies of scale. The camera manufacturer who's selling the most cameras can put the most money into shared R&D, things like computational photography and software and autofocus algorithms that they can then spread across all of their different cameras. If you're producing a very small number of cameras, you just can't do the same amount of software development as a big manufacturer could. More importantly, perhaps there's the long-term investment for you. Many of us stick with a single brand for decades. They upgrade the body and use the old lenses and then they upgrade a lens but keep their body. You get locked into a system and if you get locked into the wrong system, it can be really painful. Let's take a look at a real example. In 2016, Pentax launched the Pentax K1 and it was amazing. It was a technological marvel. Sensor stabilization, 36 megapixels. You buying in 2016 had many choices at that $1,800 price point. What if instead you had picked the much less exciting Nikon D750 for about the same price? Well, initially, the K1 certainly would have outperformed it in many different image scenarios, but here we are six years later, and as a Nikon shooter, you've had a path to upgrade to mirrorless. You could get a Nikon Z6 or a Nikon Z7 or a Nikon Z9, or you could have just got a DSLR like the Nikon D850, all using your, all of your existing lenses, just upgrading the body. As a Pentax user, you really only had the option of the K1 Mark II, which was kind of a nothing upgrade. As a Nikon user for work or pleasure, you might have been drawn to 4K or 8K video. Those are options for you that the Pentax buyer in 2016 never had. They would be stuck with HD. Nikon users could have upgraded to a vlogging kit if their work brought them in that path. They could have upgraded to a Z9 with 120 frames per second. They could have had eye detect autofocusing and that amazing animal autofocus. You can see how somebody who chose the more technologically advanced camera in 2016 might be feeling a little hurt right now because they wouldn't have that upgrade path. It's not just camera body features, but also future lens selections. Pentax has nothing wider than a 15 millimeter full frame lens. If you want a 24 F14, 35 F14, 50 F12, a 105 F14, a 600 F4, you can get all of that natively for Nikon. None of it for Pentax. I can't blame the 2016 buyer. Pentax promised a whole bunch of lenses coming. They just didn't deliver because of market pressures that did not allow the company to achieve sufficient market share and sufficient sales in order to build out a complete infrastructure. The camera manufacturers that did achieve the biggest market share, Sony, Canon, and Nikon, built out the biggest infrastructure of lenses, providing those 
buyers six years ago, so many more options in 2022 today. These are not theoretical concerns. I see these actual complaints from different mountain users all the time. Panasonic users, after the launch of this GA6, they are really, really upset that they still don't have PDAF, phase detect autofocus, which would allow it to just reliably lock onto things. Okay, not everybody cares about that, but some of them want that option. Olympus users have been super excited for that OM1 to launch, but it's still launched with a 20 megapixel sensor. Fujifilm users have the same concerns. They still don't have a high megapixel camera, nor do they have autofocus tracking that can really keep up with the big three. As I'm rattling off common complaints that I see from actual real world users, I also know there's a lot of you out there saying, whoa, that's not me. I'm totally happy with it the way it is. You might be in one of these three categories. You might say, my camera works and I have no need to change because your needs have not evolved over time. Great, you don't need to feel bad about that, that's a-okay. Other photographers aren't sweating it. Maybe they did buy into one of those systems, but they'll just send all their gear off to KEH, get some cash and then buy new gear. However, there are also many of you who are adapting to changing times. Since 2016, you probably create a lot more media for social media than you used to. You probably do more video than stills. Depending on the system you had, that might be very easy or completely impossible for you. Okay, that's why we care who's winning, but now who is actually winning? I'll try to answer that question, but it depends on who you ask. They sort of cut and cherry pick the data in different ways. Sometimes we see data presented for different geographic regions, such as North America, the US, Japan, or worldwide. We also see all digital cameras, including like fixed lens point and shoot cameras or action cameras, or we see just interchangeable lens cameras, or we might see DSLR or mirrorless. You can see this story from 2018 has a couple of criteria. Sony is now number one in full frame cameras in the US. And so we're carving out a smaller and smaller niche and claiming number one on that and just kind of ignoring everything else, but it gets the headline out there. It puts it in the public perception that Sony is winning. And for all the reasons we discussed before, that might make somebody a little more likely to buy a Sony camera. That same year in 2018, the Nikkei did a study that found Canon had almost 50% market share, by far number one. They had sold twice as many cameras as the number two player who was Nikon. And that particular study put Sony in third place at just about one eighth of the market. Why is that such a discrepancy from the number one headline that we saw in the previous slide? Well, this is global. It's all interchangeable lens cameras, including everything from micro four thirds, APS-C, not just full frame. You'll also notice that this chart is expressed in units, actual camera units. So a $300 camera would count the same as a $3,000 camera. So wait, how could Sony be number one full frame camera in the United States at only 13.3% global market share? Well, that year, 2018, they launched the Sony a7 III. The price point was what was amazing. It was basically like a $24, $2,500 camera that they were selling for $2,000. How much of a crazy value was that? Well, today, four years later, it still sells new for $2,000. That same weekend in Las Vegas, Fujifilm, launched the X-H1 for $1,900. The price dropped to like $800, $900 before Fuji just completely discontinued it. That is the tale of two separate mirrorless cameras with very similar target audiences and how it played out over four years. They had very different stories. One went on to become the number one best-selling camera of all time, I think. I have that stat later. The other one got discontinued prematurely after having the price slashed in half. The biggest difference is Sony's aggressive pricing on camera bodies. I believe they use a loss leader technique where either they sell the camera body at a loss or they sell it at very low profit in order to pull people into their infrastructure. It helps, well, one, to pump up their market share numbers so they can make cool stats like we're the number one full frame camera. But number two, it brings people into the Sony infrastructure. Here's the headline from just this past week. Sony works with a research company called NPD that analyzed 2021 data and finally pulled it all together for us here in 2022. And they had these numbers. Sony is number one for mirrorless lens and camera sales. Sony has been the number one full frame mirrorless camera manufacturer for the last eight years. Keep in mind, they were like the only one for four of those years. 
the a7 III was the number one full-frame interchangeable lens camera for four <laughs> years running. And the Sony a7 IV, the follow-up to the a7 III, had the best week of sales in the last four years. All those are impressive numbers. There are a couple of caveats here. We're talking only about mirrorless cameras, and we're talking only North America, but each one is for both units and total value. So this is impressive, but at the same time, we have carved off little pieces of data that don't give us the full picture. If you're like me, your first thought was, okay, that's cool. Now show me the worldwide data. And by the way, who's in second place? Who's in third place? Who's in fourth place? How's Panasonic doing? How's Olympus doing? I can't get that data for you. Nobody can really get that data for you without probably spending tens of thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. In a past life, believe it or not, I was a director of marketing and strategy for a Fortune 100 tech company. And I worked with a lot of industry analysts. And there would be a person who would analyze your industry. They would literally pay retailers like maybe B&H or Amazon to get their sales data and compile it. They would gather all this valuable data and then they would resell it to the companies in the industry. So somebody like Sony might be able to go to this company like NPD and say, uh, here's $50,000, tell us where we are in the rankings. You do not get to tell everybody that data. They make you sign a non-disclosure agreement that says you're going to use this data for your own purposes. You'll share it within a small number of people within your team who need that data, but you will not announce it publicly because after all, if you did, they would no longer be able to sell that data. That's the reason I can't just give you straight up market rankings based on the data that we saw carved out for Sony. So I went digging to find public sources of information that can give us some clue as to who is actually winning. And here we have Canon at 47.9%, Sony surpassing Nikon since 2018 at 22.1%, still less than half of the Canon digital camera sales followed by Nikon in a distant third place at about one eighth of the market, followed even farther by Fujifilm at 5.6%, Panasonic at 4.4%, and that other company that you're thinking of didn't even make the ranking. They have very, very small slivers of market share. This is global, it's worldwide. It's also all cameras, including little point and shoot cameras that your grandma might buy at Best Buy. It's also expressed in units, rather than actual dollar market value. So Canon might have more than twice Sony's market share, but if Sony's selling more expensive cameras, they might be making more money. Another popular source of information that gets cherry picked a lot is BCN. BCN only pulls Japanese retailers. So we can see the ranking is Canon, Sony, Fujifilm, and Nikon. Canon, Sony, and Fujifilm are all very closely packed. Nikon is in a distant fourth place, but if you look at this chart here, you can see Fujifilm took a huge leap up in the last year thanks to the popularity of Instax instant film cameras. But in this particular chart, it counts equally with something like a Nikon Z9 or a Sony Alpha 1. BCN carves the data up in many useful ways. Here we see the rankings for DSLRs sold in Japan. This is the only time you're going to see Pentax ranking for anything. They still get 6% of Japanese DSLR sales. Sony doesn't rank here at all. And that's a big part of why when we look at overall digital camera sales, we don't see Sony in first place. Now, if we look at just mirrorless units, in Japan, we see that Sony has the lead, but it's a pretty narrow lead, followed closely by Canon, and in third place, OM Systems. And I saw the Olympus fans really jumping on this one particular stat to show that Olympus was still alive. However, their market share has fallen by about half from the previous year, so it has dropped off pretty steeply. And again, we are really cherry picking the data here to look at only mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras sold in Japan by units and not by value. Olympus still does sell a lot of inexpensive cameras that the Japanese market is particularly interested in. That explains their disproportionate market share in this one particular segment. I have a data source that I go back to frequently for sanity checks. It's not a hard, reliable source of data. So what I did was I put in literally every single modern camera from every single manufacturer and then I picked the top selling camera from each manufacturer so that I could put them into a single chart here. The red line there 
no surprise, is the Sony a7 III, the camera that Sony said was the best-selling camera. It seems to be about twice as popular as the second most popular camera I could find, which was the Canon R5. Now, the R5 is followed closely by the Nikon Z6, the Fujifilm X-T4, and the Panasonic GH5. To put Olympus market share into perspective, I plugged in the Olympus OM-1. Whenever there's a new camera launch, the searches for it always temporarily spike to the highest they will ever be over the lifetime of the camera. You can see that in its all-time peak during its launch, it didn't quite reach the interest in the Canon R5 from a couple of years ago, and it didn't get even half the interest of the Sony a7 III from four years ago. OM Systems is definitely making Olympus cameras, but is it going to make a significant splash in the overall market? doesn't seem like it. There just aren't that many people interested in it, even in the week that they're going to be more interested in it than any other time in history. Here's another chart. Remember I mentioned the popularity of those Fujifilm Instax cameras? If I plug Instax into this, you can see the line goes up so high that it dwarfs everything else, including the a7 III. But what about the most popular camera in the world, the iPhone? When I put that search in and compare it to the others, you literally cannot see the lines anymore. The market share simply disappears. So my meta-analysis based on all these different sources that I've managed to scrape is that Canon is still probably the number one overall camera manufacturer, followed by Sony, Nikon, and then Fujifilm. And everybody else, I can't really rank them because their market share is getting so small that it would become difficult to sort of split those hairs. But this is including the like $400 DSLRs from five years ago that your grandma might pick up from the shelf at Best Buy. If you look at the sort of emerging market of mirrorless cameras, the segment that's certainly going to be most popular going into the future as smartphones continue to steal away the bottom part of the market, Sony's really well positioned here. Sony is definitely the number one mirrorless camera manufacturer, in my estimation, followed by Canon. And number three seems to be everybody else. Nikon is not a clear third here compared to Fujifilm especially. Panasonic, Olympus, really bit players. In particular, I think it's worth noting that the L mount, I was hardly able to find any record of them being popular at all. That's particularly interesting to me because we reviewed the Panasonic S5 and compared it directly to the extremely popular Sony a7 III and we recommended the S5. Sony has a ton of momentum, and those initial reviews for a camera like the Sony a7 III do seem to carry on for years and years, guaranteeing long-term sales. In the comments down below, let me have it. Keep it civil, but I would love to hear your thoughts. The only person sponsoring us today is Squarespace, which makes amazing websites like my own, northropphotography.com, that I use to show off my work. If you want to show your pictures off in the best light, don't go to Instagram or Facebook. Go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Get a free trial. Set your website up. Put your best pictures in there. Set up a store. Take appointments from clients. You'll find it's incredibly easy, even if you're not a nerd. Once you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Don't forget to subscribe. We have exciting reviews coming up for new cameras, some that I can't even tell you about, detailed photography tutorials, and of course, breaking news. Bye.